All right, guys, I'm back again with another project that I'm going to be doing. Today, I'm going to be building a bow holder. So, in other words, an archery compound bow holder. So, what I'm after is I got a couple pieces of lumber, not very expensive at all, about 20 bucks at your local box store for everything. And it's going to be one of the holders that they mount, or whatever you want to call it, that you mount it to the wall. And it should hold up to three compound bows and then, of course, some arrows to give it some decoration or if you just want to store your arrows that way. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the lumber list and we'll go ahead and get started. All right. This is the lumber that I got, as you can see here. It's just a 1x6x8 by by foot, which is the one on the right. Then I got a 1x6x6 by six by six foot, which is right there in, right to the left side. And then two dowel rods that are 3 8 inch in diameter. So hopefully this is all we're gonna need. And I haven't ever built one of these like most of the stuff that I've done, never built it. So we're just gonna kinda of design it as we go along. What I did here is I went ahead and cut the eight foot long piece and I cut it down as you can see right there. Don't mind my camera skills, I got it hooked to the tripod. But these two are at 30 inches in length and this one is 29 inches. So this one is gonna be one inch shy. So basically, the two 30 inch pieces, I don't know if you can see my art skills, they're gonna be the side, both sides of the, of the uh, bow hanger. So I'm gonna have to taper them out in the steps here. And then it's gonna be 29 inches wide. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and get the jigsaw out. I ain't gonna use nothing fancy, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get my measurements to do the stair stepping and go ahead and cut them slots out. And then we'll move on to the next one, all right? And this is after I drew it out. So this is the part that's going to stay. And of course I put X's on the pieces I'm cutting out so I don't confuse myself. So it's going to come over and then here and like so at the top. So basically from here to here is 10 inches. And then from this one down to this one is 10 inches. And then that leaves 10 from here to the bottom. So a 30 inch piece, so it's gonna be 10 inch segments to where the lines are drawn to where I'm gonna cut it out. So hopefully I aim to take this piece of wood and I'm going to clamp it with this one right here. And hopefully I can cut both of them at the exact same time to save me some time and make sure they're both exactly even. So this is what it looks like after it's all been cut out. And when I went ahead and did, is like I said, I want these exactly the same. So I went ahead and sanded it down. I hit it with, I think, 80 grit first and then just went straight to the 220. That way, when I sanded them, I know that they're both gonna be the exact same. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the clamps off of this. These are pretty much done for right now. And now I'm gonna have to cut that one down to fit in between these and then do the crossbars. Okay. So now I'm going to attach the base. Now what I'm going to do to make it look a little cleaner is I'm going to, since this is three quarter inch stock, I'm going to pocket hole, I'm going to put a couple pocket holes here on each side and that way I can run in. Plus it makes it a lot better joint, but I'm going to use my Craig jig and on the back, if you haven't ever used one, you see where the arrows are. I've got it set for three quarter inch, which is the thickness of this material. And I'll be using the inch and one quarter screws to put the pocket holes in. So I'm gonna go ahead now, lay these flat, and put the Craig on here, which this this one does two at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this one, then probably move it, put one in the center, and then come back over here and do this one on the end. So I'll do a total of three pocket holes into this. All right, on that six foot board that I had, I cut this one down to the inside width which was 27 and a half inches so and I went ahead and cut this one down as well so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna cut it the three and a half inches which is this width and I'm gonna mount it right here and run it all the way across to the other side all right the other one I will cut that one on the table saw this width and run it over here and I believe this was an inch and a half so <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and get those cut, but let me grab the arrow. I'm also gonna have to drill holes, so I'm gonna have to figure out where they're gonna go for the arrow. Cause I'm gonna drill some holes just where the tip will sit into there. And then basically it'll sit 
they'll sit probably about right here and then have to have something to lean that up against. I guess what I might do is I'll drill some holes in this in a straight line, mark them, and then just line this up on my table saw and rip it right dead center. And that way it will give me something to be able to prop this area in. So I know that was a bunch of babbling and I probably just confused the Dickens out of you because I think I did myself. But anyhow, maybe, hopefully, it'll make sense here in a second when I get to going. Just a little cliff note. I just ripped this down to three and a half inches and this piece right here that's left over, see if I can do this holding the camera, ended up being two inches wide. So I'm probably not even gonna need that board there so I can save that for something else unless I screw these up. So basically now what I'll do is I'll take this one, set the old table saw up to cut an inch and a half to match this and just use that one. Okay, before I ripped this thing down to an inch and a half, what I did is I went ahead and measured over to where the inch and a half is gonna be. Because like I said, I gotta cut out the slots for the areas to sit in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I don't know how far I'm gonna do it. I may not do that many areas, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes I need for the tip of the area to stick into this. That way when I rip it down this line, it's gonna cut that hole in half. And like I said, in just a second, this should make sense to you. All right, so here's what I got so far. Let me get this out the way. This don't mean nothing. All right, so this is the piece that is going right here. And this is what I drilled out. I just, I ended up measuring every, I measured, started here with two inches and then went every four inches. That way I have seven arrows in here. So before I rip this on my table saw down this line, and as you can see what I'm, what I'm going after is it's gonna split that hole pretty much. So what I'm gonna do to make sure it lines up is I'm gonna flush this with this edge all the way down. I'm gonna clamp it. And I've already got my drill bit marked. So I'm just gonna drill straight through this hole into the bottom board because I don't want it to go all the way through the bottom. I want it to stop about halfway. So that's why I just threw me some painter's tape on my drill bit to get my depth right. Depth right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these drilled and then move on along. All right, so basically this is what you're left with. Here's the holes where, let me grab this thing, where when you stick the arrow down in it, it's gonna sit and then this is where the arrow is going to prop up against when it's in the stand. So basically, we're just about done with this thing. So now, I'm going to drill a pocket hole into here and put it into this, which then again, I may just take my brad gun and put some glue and just tack it with a brad. Because if I try to do a pocket hole in this, it's so small, I'm afraid I'm going to split it or either when I get it in there, I won't be able to get but one screw and it's gonna to wanna to twist. So I'll probably put some glue on the edge and just tack it with a couple of brads. So far, this is what we have here. <clears throat> I got those attached. So there's the top that's gonna to support the feather end of the air arrow. I can't talk tonight, it's like, it's almost midnight. But anyhow, then you got the bottom and then this can be some sort of a storage shelf or what have you, because like I said, this is gonna hang on the wall, so this back here will be solid. But to give you an idea so far, is you take the arrow, and it'll sit because it's just enough lean back to where that'll sit perfectly flat, just like that. So that's what we got so far, and now I'm gonna take the dowel rods, and I'm gonna put some dowels, drill the hole and put the dowels in here, and in here. And I may do one up here. That way, it'll give you something extra to hang the bow on. Okay, what y'all didn't see, which I had to fix, was when I put this on here, I must have got the orientation wrong for where I drilled the holes. Because when I put the arrow on it when I was doing the last clip, I noticed the arrow was canted just a little bit. So I knocked it back loose and flipped it around, and now it's perfectly straight. So where we're at now, is I went ahead and marked, I went two inches down on each one of these and used a center punch and knocked the holes in it. This is where I'm gonna take my drill. It's on all of them. So basically that's where I'm gonna take my drill 
and I'm gonna drill these and then slide the uh, dowel rods in and glue that and ultimately that's what the bow is really gonna hang on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the drill out and knock that out. All right, so this is what it looks like done. Besides, I'm gonna have to stain it. So as you can see, I got the arrow back straight and you can really tell it if I put it right here on the edge. So I got the same gap and the holes are all in the bottom and then where I drilled those out and then just ripped it in half to make that pocket so that arrow will sit in it. But basically that's it. Now all I gotta do is put my mountain hardware here and go ahead and throw a coat of stain on it and let it dry and then she'll be ready to hang on the wall. All right, I'm gonna show you a little issue that I run into after I had stained this thing. I went down in my basement and of course my house was built in the 70s so paneling was popular. So I have a paneling wall in my basement. I had some hooks here that I was gonna mount this and since this from here to here is 29 inches, I couldn't find two studs to mount that to. And of course, paneling is very thin and if you hang three bows on top of this holder, that's gonna be a whole lot of weight just pulling on the paneling. So what I did is I found a piece, I guess that's maybe quarter inch thick, a little bit more piece of paneling or plywood and I cut it. So here's where I'm gonna hit one stud and this is where I'm gonna hit the other one. And of course there is another stud that'll be dead center. So I went ahead and used some screws and screwed this to the back. So I'm gonna probably put two screws in the stud here, go ahead and throw it in the middle and hook the other side. Let me turn around, I'll show you what I did. I just screwed that in on the back side. So now, when I take it back downstairs in my den and hang it up, of course you will see this, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make things work. And then people that say, why didn't I make the bow stand or bow holder wider to fit the stud? My bow is, it's a small compound bow. If I'd have made this any wider, then it would have been too wide for the limbs to be able to hang on it. So, with all that babbling, I'm gonna go down there and see if I can get this thing mounted on the wall. All right, so there's the finished product. And as you can see, like I said about that paneling, but you can see the screws here. The way it worked out is I was able to get two here, two in the stud in the center, and then the two on the corner right there. And I'm not really stressing these because when you hang a bow on the top wrong, you're not gonna see it. And I'll go ahead and I don't have my other two bows with me right now, but I'll go ahead and do some still photos of that bow hanging on each rung so you can see what I'm talking about. So once you get the three bows on it, it'll be complete and it'll look good. All right, so there's the finished product. As you can see, I went ahead and put all three bows on it. But the purple bow in the middle, just for the record, is my wife's. I don't shoot a purple bow. As you can see, there's plenty of room for having all three bows. I got my old Pearson sitting up there, the old long bow. And they actually hang on the dowel rods. And then down here, you got your little storage shelf. I got my stabilizer and trigger release down there. And then whatever you want to put down there. So that's it in a nutshell. If you got any questions, shoot me a comment. I'll try my best to answer them. And like always, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.